Uh, we do want to switch gears here. Uh, right now, Greenwood police are looking for a man who escaped police custody. Police say Alexander Lanier ran from a hospital just before 5 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. He was arrested Tuesday night after a domestic burglary incident, but police say he had to be admitted to the hospital afterward. Greenwood police say if you see Lanier, call 911. In Greenville County, a woman's death this summer has been ruled a homicide. The coroner says 41-year-old Julia Seta was found dead at her home on Arlington Avenue back on June 17th. He says that she was hurt five days prior. The coroner says Aceta died from blunt force trauma involving chronic ethanolism, meaning drinking too much alcohol. This is video from Meals on Wheels events that she took part in several years ago. Our crews here at WIFF News 4 interviewed her several times when she worked for that organization. Well, Spartanburg man will spend 18 years in prison for shooting a man to death during a fight on New Year's Day. The solicitor says 36-year-old Brandon Arledge pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter Wednesday. The shooting happened on January 1st of 2019 at the Camp Croft Courts on Hanover Place. 39-year-old Belton Dandy was killed. The solicitor says Arledge and Dandy threatened to kill one another on Facebook Live. Sled analysis of the a hat found at the scene led to Arledge. Okay, right now, a warning to expect higher utility bills this winter. We were all just talking about this. Our Daniel Robinson is joining us live in Greenville with the reason behind the expected spike. Good morning, Daniel. In Destiny, Patrick, good morning. Piedmont Natural Gas says it's because of the rising market prices for natural gas across the globe. Now, Piedmont did say that some of their customers could expect to see an increase ranging from $10 to $11 to their monthly bill. Natural gas suppliers are urging their customers to apply for their equal payment plans. Now, Piedmont says they have a number of other relief programs as well. And if you're worried about the upcoming bills, the organization is encouraging South Carolina customers to look into low income home energy assistance programs and a homeowner assistance fund. Now you can learn more about these different programs and how to apply on our website, WYFF4.com. Live in Greenville this morning, Daniel Robinson, WYFF News 4. All right, Daniel, thank you. Well, today in Abbeville County, teachers are allowed back inside Cherokee Trail Elementary School. They're allowed to assess water damage there as the cleanup efforts continue. Now, over the weekend, 48,000 gallons of water flooded the school when a pipe burst. Students are out all week because of this. On Wednesday, administrators had delivered Chromebooks to the students so that they could t continue some of their work there. The school is still on track to reopen on Monday. Well, this morning, President Joe Biden is heading to Capitol Hill to try and seal a deal on his social spending plan. Ike Diaz is in our exclusive Washington bureau with how the president is also getting ready to head overseas this afternoon. Patrick Destiny, before President Biden heads off to Italy, he's heading down Pennsylvania Avenue to the Capitol to get members of his own party on the same page. We are uh, making decisions uh, hour by hour. The White House and Democratic lawmakers say they're making progress on finalizing a social spending package and say a deal is within reach. This is the democratic process. This is how it looks when we're actually doing it in public. But President Biden had been hoping an agreement would already be in place as he leaves for Europe today to meet with the Pope and attend two global summits. He's working as hard as he possibly can to get a good solid deal. Questions loom over what will end up in the bill and what will be removed. Paid family leave could get scrapped, as well as a new billionaire's tax. Democrats are now eyeing a new surcharge of 5% on incomes above $10 million and an additional 3% on incomes beyond $25 million. The bill's final price tag is still being worked out, but it won't be as high as progressives were hoping for. It will likely be closer to $2 trillion instead of 3.5. The best course of action is to keep the keep negotiating, we are close, but we're not there yet. At this point, President Biden is hoping to have a framework in place before he leaves on his trip. In Washington, I exit as WYFF News 4. Well, there are now more so-called protected areas from immigration arrests. The list now includes domestic violence shelters and playgrounds. The Department of Homeland Security says there are exceptions, including if the wanted person poses a public safety threat. And overnight, a cross-country flight was diverted after a passenger assaulted a flight attendant. American Airlines says the plane was heading from New York to Southern California. It had to make an emergency landing in Denver. The airline did not say how the flight attendant is doing, but law enforcement took the passenger into custody. 
Delta Airlines and the TSA are rolling out new facial recognition software. That technology is meant to cut down the bag check process from more than two minutes to 30 seconds. A trial begins next month in Atlanta. Delta frequent flyers with TSA pre-check will have their passport and visa photos in a federal database compared to their live photos of them walking through the airport. Now, the TSA says that that file is then immediately destroyed for privacy prote protection. The State Department issued its first ever passport with neutral X gender designation. It's for people who don't identify as male or female and identify as non-binary, intersex, or gender non-conforming. Before, applicants needed a medical certification if their sex marker didn't match the sex listed on their official identity documents. The State Department is still updating the system and forms for this new policy. They should be completed by the beginning of next year. Meanwhile, the U.S. Postal Service is gearing up for the holiday season. They're adding another package sorter at the Greenville Processing and Distribution Center. That's one of 112 new package sorters nationwide. Last year, the Postal Service delivered a record 1.1 billion packages, including about 34 million packages here in Greenville. Well, 61 new jobs are coming to Union County. Tiger Companies announced plans to invest $10.8 million there. The company will open a surveying equipment showroom and repair a rental center. It plans to establish operations on Midway Drive in a more than 255,000 square foot facility. The blood connection is encouraging people in the upstate to give blood. The blood center says that there's a critical need for donations right now, especially O negative, O positive, and B negative blood types. The blood center is continuing to see low donor turnout. It provides blood to all of the hospitals in the upstate and says one donation can save up to three lives. Meanwhile, the NCAA men's basketball tournament is coming to Greenville next spring. They're coming back. Tickets go on sale on Saturday. The Bon Secours Wellness Arena will host first and second round games March 18th through the 20th, or March 18th and the 20th, rather. The arena says both rounds sold out in a matter of weeks back in 2017, and it's ready for the same demand this time around. Well, the World Series is heading to Atlanta for the next three games. Yeah, it wasn't going to be easy. No. We knew that. A mother and her son get to be there for game four, and it's all because of a tweet that she sent. Mm. Mickey Benton lives in North Carolina. She says that she was raised in Atlanta as a Braves fan. The last time the Braves made the World Series, she was giving birth to her son with the game on her <laughs> hospital room TV. That was the Braves-Yankees, 1999. When the Braves asked fans just how diehard of a fan they are, Mickey tweeted her story. Next thing she knows, she had a plane ticket from Delta Airlines and two World Series tickets. Awesome.